long last, we're going to finish off section 5.4, which is on graphing basic trigonometric functions. And today we're doing um, tangent. We're going to have to talk about tan. But before we do that, I thought I'd show you something that I think is pretty cool. No one ever showed this to me until I did my master's degree. And uh, I don't understand why, because I think it's pretty pretty neat. So I'm going to show you. You don't have to memorize this or anything. Uh, if you want to skip through it, go for it. But uh, I'll show you anyway. So basically, here's our unit circle. And uh, I'm going to draw an angle in standard position. Um, what we saw is that if we call this angle here theta, from this terminal point here, where the terminal arm touches the um, circumference of the circle, if we draw a line straight down from there, we get a right angle, don't we? And what we found is sine theta equals this value over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is just one, so this ends up, this distance here is actually sine theta. Right, we saw this before. And cosine theta equals this value, let's call x, over 1. And so x equals cosine theta. So this value right here is cosine theta. We saw that already. If you're confused by that, you can go back and look at one of the other videos. But what I sh want to show to you today is how you can also find distances on um, this drawing here for the other trigonometric ratios, tangent and cotangent, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Uh, first of all, I don't know if you remember, but when you first learned uh, about tangent in uh, trigonometry, you might have said to yourself, haven't we heard this word before? And you had. You learned it in grade 9 when we did circle geometry. And what a tangent line is, is a line that goes um, not quite like that, close. It's a line that touches a circle in only one place. It just comes by and just kisses the circle right there and continues on its merry way. So this is a tangent line right now, right here. Um, and what I want you to notice is that when you draw that tangent line here, you get another triangle. You get a bigger triangle. Still here, but it comes all the way up to here now, and then it comes down here and across there, and this is now another right angle triangle. So, what we can do is if we look at the tan of this angle right here, tan theta, tan equals opposite, well that's this distance, which we don't know, let's call it m, over adjacent, which is this distance. Now, that's not cosine. Cosine only goes to here, right? Cosine's only from here to here. What's the whole distance from there all the way up to there? Oh, that's the radius. It's 1. So tan theta equals m over 1, and m over 1 is just the same as m. So this distance m here, instead of calling it m now, we can call it tan theta. We've just found that this distance from here to here is equal to tan theta. By the way, that's how the name tan in sine, cos, and tan, that's how they got the name tan, is because it's formed from a tangent line. So that's how you got the name tan. Want to know how you got the name sine? It's quite confusing. It comes from, first of all, in Sanskrit, there was a word um, jiva, which means bowstring, like, the, the, you know, like a bow and arrow, the string that you pull back. How could they possibly have gotten that? Well, apparently, they looked at, if you look at double this, so if you look at here, double this line here, double the sine amount, that's supposed to look like a bow and arrow kind of, and this is the, the, what you'd be pulling back in the bow and arrow. So that equals bowstring. Okay, well I guess that kind of makes sense, but here's where things went awry. Once this word was translated into Arabic, the Arabic people misinterpreted it. They thought that the word was um, jabe. They thought that jiva in Sanskrit meant the same as jabe in Arabic, and apparently jabe means the bosom of a garment, like where clothing covers your bosom, your chest. Now, I don't know how they could possibly think that that was a translation, but that's what they thought. And then when Latin people, people speaking Latin, change it to their language, the word for jabe in Latin is sign. So sign actually means the bosom of a garment, and it's a bit of a misinterpretation. How about cosine? Where did cosine come from? Well, cosine was originally written as co-sine. It's the complementary angle um, to sine. Because, remember what complementary angles are? Complementary angles add up to 90. So, for example, this is something you might have noticed. If you have sine 30 degrees, it's exactly equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. And 30 and 60 are complementary. Same if you have sine um, 40 degrees, it's complementary to cosine 
50 degrees and they're complementary. One place you've definitely seen this is with 45 degree angles because sine 45 and cos 45 equal each other and those angles are complementary to each other. So this is where the co comes from in cosine. This is the same with cotan. Cotan is the um, when complementary angles to tan have the same value and cosecant is when complementary angles to secant have the same value. Okay, very quickly, let's also take a look at if we were looking at the um, cosine of this angle here. So the cosine of this angle is adjacent, which remember is not cosine anymore. The adjacent of this bigger triangle is 1 over hypotenuse, which we don't know what that is. Let's call it n. Now if you solve this little equation here, I'm not going to spend the time to do it, but you're going to end up with n equals 1 over cosine. And what's 1 over cosine the same as? Secant theta. So this distance from here all the way to here is equal to secant theta. Okay, we still have cosecant and uh, cotan to do, but I think I'll leave it there. If you're interested, you can look at this drawing here, and it's got them all, and maybe you can try to figure out um, where these ones came from. It's not easy. The key to it here is that this angle here is also equal to this angle here. And then um, maybe if you want, you can take a look and try to figure out how they did that. Bonus marks to anyone that can figure that out. One last thing I want to show you is you have these two triangles in here, this small triangle uh, and this bigger triangle. And because they're, they, have this, they share this angle, they both have a right angle, that means this third angle must be equal as well. And uh, if that's the case, the two angles are, are similar to each other. And when triangles are similar to each other, that means the ratio of their sides is also similar. So if we compare this side, sine theta in the small triangle, over this side, cosine theta in the small triangle, that has to be the same. This sine theta is going to be the, matches up, it corresponds to this side. So it has to be equal to tan theta over what side corresponds to cosine theta? This whole distance here, which is how much? 1. Oh, tan theta over 1 is just tan theta. So we have tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. And remember, that's something we've learned before. We've now proven it. Um, so this is also interesting and powerful stuff. All right, there you go. Um, I love it. I think it's so cool. But uh, you think what you think about it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to graph uh, the tan function. So we're going to graph y equals tan x. We've already done sine x and cosine x. We have to do tan x. And uh, remember, we're going to use this actually, this fact that tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. Well, because of that, because you're dividing by cosine theta, that means that, so therefore, tan theta is undefined when? when do, when's tan theta going to be undefined? When cosine theta equals zero. Well, when's that? When does cosine theta equal zero? Well, let's draw our little unit circle. Don't worry, we'll do this extremely quickly here. Okay, and remember our points here are 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And the first values are what? The first ones are all uh, cosine and the second ones are sine. So we're saying tan theta is undefined when cosine theta is zero. When's cosine theta zero? Here and here. So what angles are these? These are um, 90 degrees, which is the same as pi over 2, and 270 degrees, which is the same as 3 pi over 2. Okay, good. What else can we say about this? Well, if cosine theta is zero, then tan theta is undefined. What about if sine theta is zero? That's okay. What does that make tan? It makes tan equal zero, right? If you get zero here, zero divided by anything is zero. So tan theta is zero when sine theta equals zero. So where does sine theta equal zero? Well, sine theta is a second number, so it equals zero here and here. So that means tan theta equals zero at zero degrees, or zero radians and also at 180 degrees, which is the same as pi radians. Okay, there's one last uh, thing we can do to start here. We can say, what, what happens when sine theta and cosine theta, if they're equal to each other? Well, they need to be dividing by the same amounts, and if you divide by, divide by the same amounts, you get 1. So tan theta is 1 
when sine theta equals cosine theta. Uh, now, when do they equal each other? Well, they equal each other right here at 45 degrees. I don't know if you remember that, but they both equal root 2 over 2. So this is 45 degrees, or pi over 4. So they equal each other at pi over 4. They also equal each other down here when you have a ra um, reference angle of pi over 4. So that's uh, 180 plus 45 is 225. And before we figure out the radians in that, they also kind of equal each other here, don't they? The only thing is they're different signs. The cosine's negative and the sine's positive. And same within here, this time the, sine's po the cosine's positive and the sine's negative. So these ones are kind of the opposites. This would be negative one in this case. So tan is plus or minus one, I suppose you could say. It's not totally accurate, but I'm hoping you understand what I'm meaning here. In the first and third quadrant, you know that tan's positive, right? So it's going to equal positive one here. In the second and fourth quadrant, you know that tan is negative, so it's going to equal negative one in this quadrant. So the angles are at pi over four. This one here is three pi over four, and that's going to be a negative one. This one's five pi over four, and that's going to be a positive one, because sine and cos are exactly the same. And this one here is going to be, um, this is seven pi over four, and that's going to be a negative one, because um, sine and cos are opposite signs there. Okay, I think we're ready to start graphing some of this stuff. So first of all, let's label this. Let's put uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is the same as 2 pi, and 5 pi over 2. Same in the negative, we've got 1 pi over 2, negative 1 pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, which is the same as negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 4 pi over 2, which is the same as negative 2 pi. Okay, next thing it says is it's undefined when cosine theta equals 0. Undefined. Oh, so what we can do for undefined is we can draw, because it can't equal, it cannot equal pi over 2, right? The x value can't be pi over 2. So we put a dotted line there. Can't equal 3 pi over 2, dotted line. Can't. Next one would be 5 pi over 2. Can't equal that. Can't equal pi over, negative pi over 2 can equal negative 3 pi over 2, uh, can equal negative 5 pi over 2. Now, these look familiar. What do we call these things? These are asymptotes. Asymptotes. The line can get closer, the graph can get closer and closer to these lines, but it can never cross any of these or touch any of these spots right here. Okay, tan theta is equal to 0 when sine theta equals 0. That happens at 0, so when x is 0, remember this is like your x quadrant, this is your y. When x is 0, then the sine value is 0. When x is pi, the sine value is 0. When x is 2 pi, it's 0. Same out in this direction. Negative pi, negative 2 pi. Okay, now remember, some of these ones are positive, some are negative. At pi over 4, first quadrant, so pi over 4, where's that? Well, we need to add more points. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, or pi, and 5 pi over 4. Okay, at um, pi over 4, that's in the first quadrant, it is positive 1, plus 1, so it goes right there. At 3 pi over 4, that's in the third quadrant, it's negative. At 5 pi over 4, that's the third quadrant, it's positive 1. At 7 pi over 4, which would be uh, here, it's in the fourth quadrant, it's negative. And it just continues like this with the same pattern. Okay, out this way, uh, negative, this would be negative pi over 4, which is in the um, third quadrant, right? Or sorry, fourth quadrant. That's negative 45 degrees. Well, in the, neg in the fourth quadrant, tan's negative. This would be third quadrant, positive. Second quadrant, negative. And it just keeps going like that as well. Okay, so, so far what we have is the line's going to get closer and closer to this dotted line. It's going to go through these three points. So we could do, what we should probably do next is get some other values and figure out what all these values are, but this is going to take all day. So I'm just going to tell you now that what happens is it becomes like snakes and electric fences. The red dots are electric fences. These are our snakes. They can get really, really close to those electric fences, but they don't want to touch the electric fence. It hurts a little bit. So the graph looks like this, and it just keeps repeating over and over. In other words, this is a periodic function because it continues 
repeating in exactly the same way. Whoops, I missed a little bit there. And here, and this one, you can't see the whole thing. And same here, you could just see a tiny bit of it, like that. Um, okay, that is your tan graph, quite different. So let's go through all the different aspects of it. What's the domain? Well, the domain, there's a whole bunch of x values it can't be. What can x not be? x cannot be pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. So plus or minus pi over 2. It cannot be, the next one is plus or minus 3 pi over 2. It can't be plus or minus 5 pi over 2, dot, dot, dot. Range, well this goes down forever and it goes up forever. So in other words, y is an element of all reals. It can be anything. The period. How often does it repeat? Um, what's the distance between, I don't know, this one, pi over 2, and this one, 3 pi over 2? Because that's where it repeats in that distance, right there, however big that distance is, right there. Well, different distance between pi over 2, or 1 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is the same as pi. The period's pi. Remember, that's different than sine and cosine. Sine and cosine, the period was 2 pi. Amplitude. Is there an amplitude in this? No, none. How come? For amplitude, you need a maximum and minimum value to um, see what the difference is between them. But in this case, there's no max and no minimum value. Y-intercept. Yes, there is a y-intercept. It's at zero. X-intercept. There's a whole bunch. There's one at zero. There's one here at pi, and there's also one at negative pi, so plus or minus pi. There's one here at 2 pi, plus or minus 2 pi. Guess where the next one is, plus or minus 3 pi, etc. So there's uh, all the basic facts about um, tangent graphs. Okay, moving on. Oh, there's one last thing I need to tell you. Of course, this is just, this right here is the mother function for tan graphs. Of course, you could have, and we're not really going to do this because they get kind of complicated and sine and cosine is much more useful, but you could have um, all the uh, transformations. So it could be y equals a tan b times x minus c plus d, and all those letters do the same thing they've always done, right? The one thing I will tell you is that the period, remember for sine and cosine, it equals 2 pi over the absolute value of b. Well, tan graph, since the period is only pi, the period is pi divided by the absolute value of b. And uh, I guess that's important. Maybe we should uh, put that in our powerful red rectangle here. And let's try a couple. Determine the period and the phase shift and any other transformations for each of the following. Okay, well, first of all, in this first question, we need to switch this into the form that we like. So we want to factor that 4 out. So we have tan 4 x minus. So we divided 4x by 4 to get x. You have to divide pi by 4, so you get pi over 4. Now you're ready to go. The period is, we just talked about that, it equals pi over the absolute value of b. In this case, b is 4. So you get pi over 4 is your period. The phase shift, well, the phase shift is pi over 4, what direction? To the right. Any other transformations? None. Okay, this one, the period is equal to pi over the absolute value of b, which is 1 third. So that equals pi over 1 times, flip it, 3 over 1. So 3 pi is your period. The phase shift, this time it's pi over 4 again but this time it's to the left. Uh, you could also call the phase shift negative pi over 4, I guess. Uh, other transformations. Yeah, we do have other transformations because there's negative 2 here. There's two other transformations. What's the negative do? The negative causes a reflection over the x-axis, and the 2 causes a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. By the way, this, because this 1 third here is the b value, that means the period being 3 pi, it's the same as a horizontal stretch. 
by a factor of 3. Over here this would be a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 quarter. Okay, so if we go to the last question here, we had a graph y equals tan 3x. Uh, and basically it's just the same as the mother function, except you have a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. <clears throat> so if you think of some of those um, points, uh, like the asymptotes, remember we said the asymptotes, you can look back if you don't remember this, but we said the asymptotes were at pi over two plus and minus, um, three pi over two plus or minus, five pi over two plus or minus, those are the asymptotes, right? Well, if we have a compression of one third, we're gonna multiply this by one third. So then the asymptotes are gonna be at pi over six, 3 pi over 6, which is the same as pi over 2, and 5 pi over 6. This is where the asymptote should be. So for our um, labeling here, let's go up by um, pi over 6. So we have pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi, this isn't working very well, 2 pi over 3, this is 5 pi over 6, this is 6 pi over 6, which is pi. And then we could do the same thing here. I'll just do every second one. So this is pi over 3, uh, 2 pi over 3, negative, of course, and negative pi. Okay, and we said that there would be asymptotes um, at pi over 6, which is right here, uh, pi over 2, which is right here, 5 pi over 6, which is right here. Basically, every second... Uh, Point, every second line has a asymptote line, doesn't it? And I'm not going to do them all. There's just too many here. We've done so many periods here. So I'll just go to there. All right, then uh, another thing you can remember is that we said there would be um, values equal to zero at uh, zero plus or minus pi and plus or minus uh, 2 pi and 3 pi, etc. And now what you're going to do is you're going to divide all those by 3 because we've got a compression of one third. So 0 over 3 is still 0, so there's going to be a 0 right there. Pi over 3 is right here. 2 pi over 3 is right here. Oh, you can see that every single one of these spaces has a dot, and this would continue on, but I'm not going to do them all. And then you could even do it for um, the uh, places where it equals 1. Um, and I think once you've done this, or you can probably even do it right now, it's still going to have the same basic shape. It's going to go up like this and down like this. And it's going to do this over and over and over again. Um, so I don't know. We can draw as f a few of them, I guess. Snakes and electric fence, right? Something like that. So you can see we've got a horizontal compression. We've compressed the graph so we can now fit more periods in here. And uh, of course it doesn't actually just stop where I've done it. You'd have more out here and here and here and here and it goes forever. Now you could look at the graph to figure out the period or you could figure it out from the equation. Let's do it with the equation. The period equals pi divided by the absolute value of b and in this case the b value is 3. So the period's pi over 3. Uh, the range, let's do that one next. Well, the range never changes. It goes down forever, it goes up forever. The range, y, y is an element of all reals. Dot, dot there. And domain, it's going to be third as much as it was before because of the compression of a third. Everywhere you have a vertical asymptote, that's uh, where you can't have x values equal to that. So we cannot have an x value equal to pi over 6 is the first one or negative pi over 6, so plus or minus. You can't have it equal to um, pi over 2, positive or negative pi over 2. Next one is um, 5 pi over 6, plus or minus, and then it just keeps going like that, I'll put dot, dot, dot. Okay, so there's your period range and domain. There's also graphs for secant and cotan and cosecant, but uh, I'm not gonna do those in videos. Maybe we'll do them in class. All right, take care, everyone. Oh.